Hello and welcome to today's 30-minute uh, masterclass. We're looking at attracting and engaging your audience today and we're talking specifically about visuals. So I'm going to uh, stick very closely to the 30 minutes and I hope you're going to really enjoy this. So let's get moving because I'm excited about it as well. My name is Barbara Gemmett and I'm the founder of Your Entrepreneurial Spirit. Um, I'm a business strategist for women entrepreneurs and I'll help you to connect with your customers. I really enjoy working with um, entrepreneurial women. They have a different way of doing business and it's very exciting to work with you. So welcome today um, for our session. As usual, before I actually get down to the meat and potatoes of this 30 minutes, I like to start with um, a valid quote one that uh, you can hopefully move forward with. And it's this one today. It's a visual world and people respond to visuals. I think we all know that. Um, Joe Sacco is just reminding us of that with this great short quote. So what we're gonna look at today is why you should invest in visual content more than you probably have been doing. We're going to identify some of the visuals that resonate with your audience that uh, draw them to you. We're going to plan your content focus, uh, look at creating attention grabbing visuals, and then what you need to worry about when you're publishing so that you get the maximum visibility on those items. So the first thing I'd like to answer is why it's worth investing in visual content. There's a, several reasons, but um, these days, it's becoming more evident that we need to focus on the visual. What this means for you is that visual content consistently, oops, sorry, consistently outperforms um, other types of content. With visuals, you, can, you have the ability to show rather than tell your story, and visuals make it easy to get your message across. So make sure that you choose visuals or use visuals so that you get the most mileage from your um, content at all times. So let's talk about visuals that resonate with your audience. What happens is when you make uh, visuals that resonate with your audience, you are actually making connections and actually making um, emotional connections with your audience or the viewer. If you take a look at the types of content that your friends and connections share on, on social media, particularly Facebook, you'll see that there seems to be a trend towards them and it tells you actually a lot about the person. What made them share it if you look at a, a particular item? Um, what did they identify with the image over? Was it sentiment or was it some other aspect of the visual? Your goal with visual content is to be able to create and choose visuals that actually touch those emotional centers and where they can make a connection with you. In order to know what, to, what will engage them though, you do have to understand your audience pretty well. So there's, we can go into things like, you know, your ideal audience and those things, but I think that is not the focus of today. So what we'll do then is we'll say, that there's a really good chance that you already know or have done the work in identifying and learning about your ideal client or your target audience, if you will. And a lot of times you have gone through the exercise of creating a target market persona or, um, yeah, we'll call it a persona for now, that you use in your marketing anyway. So this persona identifies the demographic and psychological information about a business and its potential customers. So we know that. So this information is what you use to build your visuals. It's extremely useful to work from the target audience perspective. If you haven't done it yet, you need to start thinking about that. For our purposes today though, we're just gonna say that you have a good idea of your audience. And so you're in the position now to start choosing the relevant visuals for them. We're going to talk about figuring out where your um, audience hangs out online. 
that was part of your original process. So I'm assuming that you have a fairly good handle on that at least. Uh, where do they consume the content? This could include certain things like websites and blogs, e-zines, other websites, um, social media, you name it. You already know this part of it. We are going to look at imagining who your ideal follower is and identifying some of the things that they enjoy seeing in their um, virtual world. So while we're talking about this very briefly, um, you'll definitely have more than one persona available to you or um, that you market to. So be prepared to, to look at the commonalities between them and to, to work towards that. So uh, when you have multiples like this, you um, can do two things. You can attempt to lump them all together, which is not necessarily a good thing, or you can break your audience in, into specific categories and create buckets of um, visuals based on the content that they might consume. So if your market is, has two or somewhat more um, different categories, for example, grandparents and millennials, we have to agree are different. Um, we can serve them um, similar items, but we need to come at it from a different perspective. So you would separate those two out. You're probably in a position to make a pretty good educated guess as to who your audience is. But if you've done the work prior to, you know that it's actually better to work from actual data instead of from your guessing. So when we talk about um, who our audiences are, we can then start to see that there are multiple patterns that are going on um, and through. So when you follow some of your followers, if you follow them back, you'll see that they um, are attracted to different types of visuals. And you can use this type of information to create what we call a visual profile that defines what they like and what resonates with them. So you, for example, you might have an audience that really likes memes. Okay, I like memes too. Um, and they share them on social media. If you look at the memes that they share, you might find that some are, or possibly most, are humorous. And they make jokes about their everyday lives. They could possibly be somewhat, um, somewhat familiar or um, intrigued by world events, things like that. This is a good starting point for the type of content that you want to share with these people. And you make a note of it in their visual content profile. The profile that says that, yes, this group uh, enjoys memes. They generally um, are very concerned with family. There's a lot of posts that they share around this topic. So when you're creating this visual content profile, the most important metric to look for is engagement another lovely word um, and that refers to what's going on on the social media the great thing about social media is that it actually allows you to see what they what the engagement is on a particular post and we all know that so pay attention to that if you haven't been um, a lot of times people pay attention to it on their own posts, but they don't pay attention to it on posts that they didn't generate and you should also pay attention to that look at those numbers and um, and see that your profile is actually enjoying that content. You can do your, the same thing with your own website. Post visuals and see what um, kind of reaction you get from them. There are different types of content on social media and you'll be able to see what's also getting the most engagement from your items. So when you are looking to put your content into buckets, you can also categorize them. So here's a few examples. So you're going to create some infographics, goes in the one bucket, humorous memes, another bucket, inspirational quotes, another bucket, because eventually you're going to start pulling these things out and you're going to be using them intermittently. But at least you'll have the buckets to be able to go to very quickly. Um, also, you could choose other qualities such as text-heavy um, images or 
content or text light or no text at all. And you could classify them by what emotions the content inspires. So that's always a good one too. By the way, your competition can help you learn a lot about visual content that works. Um, they can help you see the types of visual content that your audience likes. And it wouldn't hurt you to spend the time to follow your competitors and see what they create and share and how the audience is, is reacting to it. Choose competitors that have been around for a while. Sharing the types of content and interacting with the audience that they seem to think is working. Try to choose competitors that have a large and engaged audience. Let's talk now then about um, planning your visual content focus. And this is about defining goals. So to this point, we know kind of what types of content our, our audience likes to see. And it's time now to start planning your strategy, your content strategy. So we start by setting goals for your visual content. We need to define what we want to do with it and where you'll focus your efforts and what results you expect to get from it. Examples of goals might be increasing engagement with your audience. It could be grow your online audience. It could be drive traffic to your website. It could be increase sales. Make your goal specific. Instead of just defining a goal as to grow my online audience, Set a target and a deadline for achieving that target, such as grow my audience by 100 each month. This helps you reach your goals and assess whether or not you've achieved the goal. It also uh, lets you just set the goal to grow my audience online. And if you do that, how do you know that you, they've actually completed the task? What does grow mean? Your goal should be specific and measurable. Yeah, yeah, the smart goals as usual. You might also define your goals in terms of how it fits into your overall strategy. For example, your visual content itself will not or may not increase sales, but it will help you grow a relationship with your audience and give them a reason to check out your website, where you'll then be promoting products and increasing sales. So when you're looking at creating your attention grabbing visuals, now it's time the fun starts. So we've def defined who, we've defined what the goal is for that. Now it comes down to the creation or the overseeing of the creation. We can start very easily at the top of this table and we start with um, what to create and this is simple images in this part. Um, it could be an image that you create yourself that is designed to resonate with your audience and it has some kind of meaning for them or elicits a certain emotional reaction. It could be an image with a quote. Inspirational quotes are really good here. The quote gives your audience something further to resonate with beyond just the image. Images for blog posts. Uh, blog posts and text-based articles need images in order to make them more fun to read. Remember, we're very visual. And it also helps your blog to stand out um, from, from the others because it shows your personality somewhat. And it also encourages the reader to keep reading on your blog. The next item is infographics. Infographics are visual, uh, a visual aid, I should say, that usually displays some kind of factual information. It takes the information content and it puts it into a read at a glance type environment so it can also be presented as text and something such as uh, a how-to and infographics are great at creating engagement on social media and other sites online um, the next row starts off with graphs and diagrams. This is an illustration that takes a simple piece of data and visualizes it in a graph or a flow chart, something like that. It's like a simpler version of an infographic, if you will, 
Whereas infographics take a variety of data, this one would take just one bit, like a particular statistic or fact. Videos. These days, it's becoming much more easy and affordable to create videos. So this means that you can incorporate short videos into your visual content strategy. If you have the means to produce them, and we'll talk about a few options in a few slides, go ahead. It is not hard. And these days, you have uh, a lot more control over the output that you receive. And it's incredibly cost effective. GIFs, we, I think we know what GIFs are. The definition is a visual that shows a short scene repeating over and over again. Very easy to produce and to publish and don't take a lot of memory to create. And then that's followed up by cinemagraphs. A cinemagraph is a GIF that where just one part of the image moves. Cinemagraphs are currently growing in popularity because you know what? They make you focus. They're unique because they combine both the still image and the GIF moving image. Uh, the next type, well, the next row contains these types, memes and calls to action. So a meme is an image with words that are usually, usually attempting to be humorous. The key is a good meme is that its sentiment is something that the audience can relate to. There's no point in creating it when they don't understand what it is. Um, they might say something like, the moment you, when you realize dot, dot, dot. So that's a meme. Calls to action. Images can be used as a visual call to action. Visual calls to action produce uh, higher conversions than text-based calls to action. So just so you know that, the visual produces a better result than the text-based. Um, this is where you can use these items to get people to sign up for your list, to share content uh, with something like share if you agree, and so on. Presentations. This is an interactive slideshow that presents information in a logical sequence where you know what a presentation is. And the last one on this row is sliders. A slider is an image where you click on it and it slides to another image. Great for showing before and afters, showing comparisons, offering quiz questions, or telling a joke, with the second image being the punchline. And on this last row, we talk about things like visual quizzes. So the quizzes that you see on social media that people so gleefully fill in, uh, this is a form of, con of visual content. Cartoons and comics are not something that I use a lot, but um, you can create simple ones that communicate your ideas. Uh, it does work a lot better, though, if these are humorous. The next one is a screenshot. It's still it's an image that you have on your computer screen. We know that. We take a snap of that. They're usually helpful if you have something that you can show the audience how to do. And ads. Uh, many ad networks and platforms, including Facebook, allow you to create and add visuals to your ads. So nothing new there. So these are the types of things that you can create. And as you can see, there's something here for everybody and every skill level. Also, uh, a lot of these are cost effective. And um, you will always be able to find enough that you can use and, and make good use of that. So let's talk about then reusing existing content. Before you start creating new stuff, which is great, you should be able to go back at, and look at your existing content, whatever form that it's in, and see if there's anything that you can use. Go back over the stuff that you've created until now, including visuals. Um, just go through them and you know identify content that you can use now. Included here are things that you just need a dusting and a cleaning. You might have something a little outdated that a simple edit would, would bring into the here and now. Or you could crop uh, an image that you've used before and give it a whole new perspective by cropping it and, and um, 
changing the focus on that particular item. As you inventory, um, take a look at the data that you've collected. So, okay, th this piece might work because my audience likes X that we talked about earlier. And test each piece against this and say, is this something that would resonate with my crew, with my audience? Um, for those that you answer yes, add them to your content strategy. For those that don't resonate, put them in the pile over there to see if there are changes that you could make to make them relevant. Uh, changes include things like updating information, shifting the focus, adding content, changing the tone, things like that. You should also consider repurposing other content into visual content. Repurposing means taking old content and making major changes to the content so that you end up with a totally new piece. So what you're going to do here then as you repurpose is you're going to take a piece of content and transform it. Create a new version or a format of the content that you previously had. You should also consider repurposing other content into visuals. Repurposing means the old stuff, and a lot of us have old stuff lying around, and it's just taking up room on a hard drive somewhere when you could be using that and not having to create from scratch if you don't want to. A common example of repurposing is to take a piece of text content and turn it into something visual. You could take something like a tips article and turn it into an infographic. And each tip would be summarized into a short sentence and represented visually. You can extract the most cogent points from an article and turn it into quotes, each with a cool image that uh, is relevant. You could turn an article into a slideshow or a presentation. Each major point gets its own slide and the wording is, you know, slimmed down and summarized appropriately. Any type of content can potentially be repurposed into any other. A few other examples of things you can do include mm, taking screenshots of a video and adding text to create visuals, turning an ebook into a long interactive slideshow presentation, identifying the most salient points of a podcast interview and turning them into an infographic. So there's lots of options there. So here's some of the tools that I use um, to create some of these. And these are a few of my favorite things, although some are more favorite than others. Canva um, is incredibly popular with everyone. Personally, I prefer Crello, um, but that's just my personal preference. Canva can do a lot of things and it is either free or very reasonably priced. Promo Republic and Relay That are possibly things that you haven't heard of before, but they are, their main item is to create marketing graphics. Um, Promo Republic is also a social sharer and um, has a calendar and a number of other things, an editor as well. Relay That has uh, incredible templates that you can use, professionally designed templates where you just have to change the text, change the imagery, and you don't have to worry about making design faux pas. Visme and Vengage, two of my very favorite items. And these have thing, have a number of different options and templates, including infographics, um, presentations, uh, graphics. Some have, one has ebook potential, and there's a number of different things, but both of them are worth looking at. Pixabay and Pixel, Pexels, I should say, there's where you can go for free um, images that you can add to your to your environment. Uh, there's many more, but I just picked those two because they're both P's. I don't know why. It sounds good. Wave and Crello. Uh, Crello's appeared twice in this list. Wave is for creating very, very short um, videos. I think now the longest video you can do on the cheapest or the free the free um, program is probably 15 seconds. So if you do go up to their next level, um, you get a, you can create longer videos. Crello has the ability to create uh, videos as well as stills. And um, depending on the plan that you have, 
that would also work kind of the same way. NVIDIA is for a more um, polished video that um, based on the plan that you have uh, will also have a time limit on it, which it, but I think it's a little bit more, more um, generous than the wave one. PowerPoint is a good old fallback. You can use PowerPoint for a number of things and please don't let people tell you that you can't. Um, sometimes it's just as good to do it in PowerPoint as it is to try and do it in, in Canva as far as I'm concerned. Another quickie is Word Swag. Um, generally that's a mobile app and it allows you to do a number of things from your phone, create great um, posts and things like that. And Adobe Spark has a number of different things that you can use as well. The tools are simpler today and this is just an example of what you can um, create or yes, create with um, Canva in this point. So use your visuals to tell a story. Use your visuals to um, emotionally and powerfully connect with people and use your visual image to hint at things that happened before or what will happen after. Use stock images well if you're going to do that. Um, stock images, as I said, Pixabay, Pexels, Unsplash, all of those, they offer a shortcut to creating your imagery. But badly chosen stock images can seem fake. Choose unique looking images and edit them or use it as part of a piece of visual content so your audience won't see the same, same image everywhere. So the final step in this process is to publish your visual content um, for maximum visibility. But before you publish, you need to choose the platforms that you want to uh, publish to and which content will go where. Here are some guidelines for your visual content. Remember to identify the goals for your visuals. We talked about that earlier. Remember to repurpose your old content. Otherwise you will hurt your brain trying to come up with something absolutely new every time. Remember trends and audience taste change. Stay on the ball with trends and monitor the performance that your audience is paying attention to. Use your defined brand elements. So we didn't talk about it much, but make sure that you add your logo unobtrusively to any of your visuals and make it more of an engaging and, and re, um, memorable piece. And they even pick up your logo by osmosis, if you will. So make sure that it doesn't um, overpower the overall visual. And create effective eye-catching content. Take in, into consideration things like fonts, imagery, and best practices. So all these things can come into play as well. Visual content sets you apart from your competition for sure. So make sure you stamp with your logo. There's always a chance somebody will steal your visual content, but any piece of content where you publish, it could be copied and pasted elsewhere, you know that. But let's cut it down a little bit by making sure that you have your logo um, placed appropriately uh, to make it a little bit more difficult for people to, to steal the piece. Um, you can also add a watermark, which is a, a very small signature that shows that the image is yours. Your logo can be used as a watermark. The key is to make it large enough to be visible and legible, but small enough that it doesn't take away from the imagery again. For each image that you use, use the highest quality possible. Consider the platform first and size your image so that it's the highest possible resolution for the platform specifications. High resolution images can easily be resized to different mediums, so avoid low quality images as they don't transform well when you try and change the sizing. The next major decision that's going to help you separate you from your competition is where to publish that visual content. Your strategy will identify what type of content you'll post where. 
Keep in mind that you can always change your strategy once you start publishing and tracking. How do you know what's working and what isn't? You can start by looking at the, the native data that you get back from the platforms where you publish. Facebook, for example, offers, offers uh, analytics and they're not the only one they all do. So in addition to the simple data that you can see, check your analytics to see what's going on. And don't forget, you can also ask your audience for feedback. Ask them what ki kind of content they enjoyed the most and what would they like to see more of. Ask them for ideas of topics they'd like to see you handle. Monitor your visual content and see how it's received to your audience. You can then make any necessary changes you have to do. So here we are at the end of our 30 minutes, oh, over by a minute I can see. Um, here is the closing quote for today. Create your own visual style. Let it be unique for yourself and your business. And yet it's identifiable for others. So they'll know that it's your content once they get to see it regularly. And this quote is by Orson Welles. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you for joining us today. It's been my pleasure to spend this 30 minutes with you. Please look out for our next masterclass. It'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. My name is Barbara Jemmett. I'm the founder of Your Entrepreneurial Spirit, and it has been my pleasure to be with you today. I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye now.